Welcome to the Shields Outdoors podcast, your source for information on hunting, fishing, and all of your outdoor passions. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shields Outdoors podcast. My name is Mike Anderson, and today we're going to be talking about fishing gear, and in specific, our exclusive line of Shields Outfitters products. Now, the great thing about having an exclusive line of products is that we can do extensive research and development and come up with something that's going to really perform out on the water. With us today is an individual that has been with us basically since the inception of Shields Outfitters products, and that is the one and only Johnny Candle. Johnny, good to have you with us today. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got started with, uh, with research and development on the Shields Outfitter line and what you're doing today? Sure, I'd love to, Mike. Uh, I've been with Shields for 18 years now, and all of those 18 years, one of my roles working with the Shields brand is to help develop a line of products that we're proud to put the Shields Outfitter label on. Uh, started out with fishing rods way back then, and it has grown to encompass reels and baits, maybe some tackle storage, a little bit of clothing here and there as well. But uh, Shields has developed over the last two decades uh, a rather extensive line of Shields Outfitter fishing gear uh, that is not just exclusive to us, but it is us. It is Shields. It is designed and tested and researched and developed by Shields exclusively for our customers. Mm -hmm. So you, you're definitely in an enviable position, you know, like being in social media, there's a lot of people out there that ask, Hey, can I do some tests and do some videos? Like, how did you, how did you jump into that position originally? How did it start? Oh, it started off. Uh, I started, what would you say, courting shields? Maybe is that is that how you would put it? Uh, That'd be uh, one way to chasing, put it. <laughs> chasing, courting. I don't know. One of those two words works. Uh, in about the year 2000, I moved to North Dakota in 1996, and before then, had no idea what shields was all about. Uh, the store in Bismarck, where I moved to, was uh, one of the top performing fishing shops in the state, and still is to this day. And Dennis Benzi was the store leader then. Uh, recently retired from the Bismarck store. Uh, met him, talked to him, talked to him about what I did, how I would love to include Shields in some of my promotional activities. And Dennis found a way to get me in the store to do a few things for the Bismarck store exclusively. That grew over the next couple of years to where I finally reached a point where uh, we felt that the program was strong enough to take to the corporate office. Uh, got a meeting with the marketing team, pitched what I had to pitch, and they they thought it was a good program. So got sign, signed on corporately. Uh, like I said, I think this is my 19th season with uh, Shields. So ever since then, the duties have expanded. Uh, some things I'm still doing that I did then. Some things we're doing now we never thought of back then, like a podcast remote from uh, my home, right? 19 years ago, who would have ever thought, Mike, that we would be doing something like this? Uh, But right from the beginning, uh, developing the Shields branded products was a big part of what Shields would like to see from a professional angler. They now had that direct line to someone that's on the water more than 150 days a year using products, uh, abusing products, possibly. Uh, I don't want to say that I go out and intentionally try to break stuff, but as a tournament angler and a fishing guide, the equipment in my boat gets its fair share of abuse. Uh, it gets thrown around. It doesn't get treated the best. It maybe gets left out in weather. Uh, again, it's getting used every day in the harshest conditions. And what a better way to make sure that the Shields Outfitter branded ma- materials and merchandise met the grade to have that Shields name on it. No, I mean, that makes perfect sense being a professional angler out on the water so much time. I mean, you, you put gear through situations that, that, you know, most products wouldn't see in their lifetime. And you, and you put the, you put them through that on a, on a daily basis. So that's, that's very cool to see. Um, so you touched on, uh, rods as one of the main things that you do. Can you, uh, can you, 
give us a little hint into what you've been testing lately? Uh, well, this last year was a pretty big year for Shields Outfitter rods. If, if you follow the Shields Outfitter brand, you're going to see some new stuff on the shelves uh, this spring when you get to shop. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to figure where, where do I want to start? Do you start at the top and come back or start at the bottom and go forward? We'll, we'll start with the, the Ibisu line, uh, the Shields Ibisu rods. Those were introduced about three years ago, and we added a couple more rods to the lineup. I have a few of them here with me. Uh, what we started with originally was just the Ibisu rod, and it got a nice little facelift this year. That's the white graphics, uh, nice cork handle, really, really sharp. Uh, I know sometimes on video you don't see it, and it's really kind of hard to uh, sell a fishing rod just on a visual. You've got to feel it. But uh, it was a great performer for us. It's a right price point. It comes in at right around $100, and it's technique specific so that's really cool when you can come into a store and say i want to fish a, a shaky head jig for a largemouth bass and we have a rod that was tested and designed to properly fish a shaky head jig maybe you want to fish a jig and wrap for a walleye that's also gone into this rod it's it's definitely bass weighted but it's not bass specific uh, so it's got several lengths of action spinning and bait casting and again, was very successful. So we gave that a nice facelift. If you're familiar with the Ibisu rod, lengths, actions, sensitivity did not change, just the look. We also added after that, the Ibisu Pro series. Guys that enjoyed the Ibisu rod wanted to step it up a notch. They wanted something a little bit lighter, a little more sensitive, maybe even more high performance. So we expanded the Ibisu line to the Ibisu Pro. More sensitive graphite, lighter in your hand, but still length and action technique specific. It was a big hit that came in at about $30 more. What we've done this year now is expanded the rod line. I don't want to say backwards because that's not the right word, but in the other direction. We added an entry level to the Ibisu rod series. It's called the Ibisu Z. This is going to have a, a little bit less expensive handle and components, but the rods, lengths, and actions are still technique specific. So now you're getting into that rod at well under $100, where, again, I want to flip creature baits into heavy cover for largemouth bass or I want to fish a drop shot in deep, clear water for smallmouth bass. We have the lengths and actions specifically designed for those techniques in the Ibisu series. And the one rod I did not bring today, uh, I could not get it dug out from the pile that it's stored in for the winter, was the uh, Ibisu glass. We have a line of fiberglass rods in the Ibisu line now, specifically designed for cranking, for casting and retrieving those high action baits, your chatter baits, crank baits, jerk baits. It's that medium, moderate action that you can only get from a fiberglass rod blank, and we've added that. So right there is just one rod series under the Shields Outfitter brand that I got to work on last year, uh, making all those pieces of the puzzle fit. Uh, I want to make it clear, Mike, that I'm not the only guy involved with this. There's a team of about six or seven folks that work on this project. Uh, I'm obviously not the guy that's talking to a, a factory somewhere to tell them how to build a fishing rod because I have no idea. But I do know what feels good in my hand. I know what bends the right way for certain species, certain techniques. And I think I have a good idea what someone's going to be happy to fish with. You want that rod to look good, right? You want that sense of pride when you pick it up off the shelf and you're proud to handle it, proud to fish with it, proud to show it off to your friends. And I think we've done that with uh, the Shields Ibisu line and all of the Shields Outfitter rods for that matter. Mm -hmm, absolutely. It's really cool to see the, the line of technique specific rods, but you know, the, the rods are still going to be multi-purpose and you know, it's a, there's a variety of price points. There's just a lot, a lot of thought and effort that's really gone into this line of products. So you, you've touched on, um, you know, talking about the factory, like we don't have just a factory around here, but we still, <laughs> we still have a lot of, a lot of 
thought on the the input and and the components and how everything works. Can you can you touch on that kind of dynamic? Yeah, let's just walk through what it takes to build a fishing rod in the first place and how Shields goes about our own line of rods. So a fishing rod, obviously you need a, a material to make the rod blank. Most of the time nowadays, that's some kind of carbon fiber or graphite uh, and different levels of graphite bend and, and react and uh, work in different ways, right? They're lighter, they're more sensitive, they're heavier, they're less sensitive. They bend more, they bend less, they're more durable, they're less durable. Uh, then you've got the components that go into the rod. You've got the handle and the guides. You've got the finish uh, and all the design elements there. Uh, that's a whole other podcast, right? What's it look like? Uh, does it look like a race car or does it look like a, a workhorse pickup truck? And Shields Outfitter has all of that in their lineup. So what does Shields do when they want to build a fishing rod to add to the Shields Outfitter series? Well, we sit down as a group. And like I mentioned, there's six or seven of us, sometimes maybe even eight, depending on who's in the cycle. And we talk about it. Uh, we need a bass specific line of rods that are technique specific. Okay, where do you start? Well, how much do we want to sell it for? And we pick a price point. And then people above my pay grade work backwards to see if they can hit that price point with the features that Shields wants in the rod. We want it to be a certain amount of sensitive. We want it to weigh a certain amount. We want it to have this level of components built into the rod. If we want to sell it for $100, can we build that rod and hit that price? The people we work with that build the rods for us will say yes or no. Once they say yes, then we have to figure out how many rods are going to be in that rod line. Are we gonna have six? Are we gonna have eight? Are we gonna have 12? Uh, as you'll notice, usually the higher the price point or the more the rod costs, the less amount of specific lengths and actions we have. Just because let's face it folks, none of us own 15 fishing rods that cost $500 a piece. Uh, maybe some of us do, I shouldn't say that. I should clarify. Maybe you're fortunate enough that you get to. I don't have that many. Yeah, a, a uh, so, vast majority of us won't have that many. <laughs> Correct. So that's how it starts. Uh, once we figure out we want, uh, and again, I'm just going to spitball these out there, Mike. We want a six-foot medium power fast action rod, a six-foot medium light, uh, and a, then we go to six-six, and we might add medium heavy, medium and medium light. Then we go to seven-foot or seven-foot two or seven-foot four but we build the lineup. Then our rod builder puts together a test set and they send them back to Shields. This process takes anywhere from six to eight months, maybe even a year. Uh, when we get those sample rods back, the team splits them up in a manner that makes the most sense. I being a walleye angler, I'm probably not going to test very many seven foot two extra heavy, extra fast bass flipping sticks because that's not how I fish. So the guys that fish certain ways will take the rods that they're going to use most often. Uh, other guys will take different ones and we go put them through the test and we do all we can to fish them as hard as we possibly can, as many times as we possibly can, put them through as many different situations as we can. Literally try to break the stuff, uh, not on purpose, but Fish it as hard as you think that equipment can tolerate being fished. We're looking to see, does it feel right in your hand? Does it have the sensitivity that we expected it to have? Does it bend in the right manner, right? If we label the rod fast action, but it bends more extra fast, well, then we have to change something and get it back to where we wanted it. We'll do that usually twice. We'll get that first set. We'll make some adjustments get through the second testing 90% of the time, Mike, the rods are pretty good after that second testing and they go into production. There have been a few occasions where we've had to take a couple of rods to a third set of testing. And that just speaks highly for how particular Shields is when it comes to putting their name on a fishing rod. If it's not what we want, we don't build it. We'll delay the project for a year. Uh, it's no harm, no foul. The rods will still come out a year later. People are still going to get to enjoy fishing with them. 
but we want them to be perfect. Mm -hmm. So start to finish a Shields Outfitter rod from inception to someone being able to buy it very easily could take up to three years. Interesting. So you touched on the, what was it, Abisu line? Yep, yep. Okay, what are, what are, the, other, what are the other lines of rods? Oh, man, you, that, you just asked me the stumper of all stumpers, right? Uh, <laughs> I can rattle off a lot of the ones that I fish with. Uh, there's a lot that I'll probably miss. Uh, we've got the Cl Pro Classic. There's the Tournament. There's the Guide. Uh, we have the One Series. Uh, and the one series is like the Ibisu. It stretches out to include uh, the one, the one limited, the one. Yeah, right. I've got one sitting here. The one, yeah, one limited, one titanium, and a new one next year called the one heritage. Uh, there's, like as I mentioned, the tournament series. Uh, there's a walleye series. We've got a catfish series, a muskie series. Uh, and I'm sure I left some out. Uh, there's there's a lot that I don't use every day, so I lose track of which ones are still active and which ones aren't. But there's a lot of them. Uh, I cannot remember the number of SKUs, stock keeping units, in the Shields Outfitter rod brand, but it's it's several hundred. And if you walk into a Shields store, it becomes very, very evident that uh, we've tried to provide something for everyone in the Shields Outfitter fishing rod lineup. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So basically to sum it all up is if you're looking for a certain type of fish or fishing style, we're going to have a technique specific rod for you. Oh, there's no doubt about it. And, and we also have a lot of rods, Mike, that are not so much technique specific, right? When you, when you get down into those rods that are, you know, we'll talk dollars and cents, maybe 75, $80 and down, uh, incredibly incredible quality products still so the price does not translate into quality but they're much more generic when you get into those lower price point fishing rods you you start to see your six foot six medium fast or your six foot ultra light or your seven foot heavy uh, when you get above that hundred dollar price point is when you start getting into your very unique uh, technique specific rods where you've got the seven foot three inch medium extra fast, right? Uh, very, very specific to casting a, a, a moderate weight jig, maybe a, doing a little bit of live bait rigging. Uh, or in the bass world, you start getting into those medium moderate fiberglass rods. Again, that's very, very specific to casting a crankbait. You don't see that much specificity when you get down into the $49, $39, $29 rods, which are, again, great rods. They'll do a little bit of everything for you, but a little bit more generic in the links and actions. Okay, perfect. Um, let's go through just a little situation, situational fishing. A customer walks into the store um, and just give your preferred rod recommendation. Okay. All right. Get, throw one at me. We'll see what we can do. Okay, so I'm a customer that is just new into fishing, you know, is, is excited about it, doesn't get out, I don't, I don't have the gear yet. I'm budget conscious, I, I want to be able to toss it out, you know, off the shore for some sunfish and do some crappie fishing and, you know, if I find myself on a boat fishing for walleye, that rod will take care of it too. What do you got for me? Well, I would probably look at the Shields Pro Angler line. Uh, very, very moderately priced. I, uh, and again, please don't quote me, but it's somewhere in that $60 to $70 range, maybe even a little less if you're shopping during a, a fish fest or our spring Shields sale. Uh, it's a nice IM6 graphite rod. It's great sensitivity. Uh, so the rod itself, we got the family figured out uh, where we want to be, again, mentioning that you're price conscious. Uh, probably would go with a six and a half foot rod. And if you're going to fish crappies and occasionally walleye, I would probably lean to the medium light. Uh, if you told me just crappies, light action or light power would probably do just fine. But if you are going to do a little bit of walleye fishing, the last thing I would really want is for you to hook into that fish of a lifetime and have that light power rod and you're doing battle with a six or seven pound walleye 
and you're undermatched. Uh, so probably that medium light, uh, I would pair it up with a nice size 2500 reel. I would probably put eight pound super line on there of some brand, maybe 10 pound uh, braided or a Berkeley fire line, something like that. And the reason for that is you've got enough strength to handle the larger fish, but it's going to fish light enough because the super line is so thin that you can still fish those, you know, eighth and 16th and maybe even 32nd out jigs for crappies. So I think that's probably where I'd point you somewhere in that direction. Probably should be able to get you to out the door with a rod and a reel spooled up with line for just a shade over a hundred dollar bill, which is uh, not much more than a tank of gasoline in my pickup truck anymore. So not a bad value. All right. There you go. Okay. Customer two. I am a diehard walleye fisherman. I spend a lot of time pulling spinners. I'll do uh, shad wraps, uh, do some jigging. I, I don't want the lowest one, but I don't want to spend an arm and a leg. What do you got for me? Oh, the Shields Walleye Series is perfect for that guy. Uh, there's no doubt about it. The Shields Walleye Series is to walleye what that Ibisu Series is to bass that we talked about earlier. Uh, there's several lengths and actions in there designed specifically for bottom bouncing. There's uh, crankbait casting. There's slip bobber rods. There's a little bit of everything in there. I think the best all around length and action in the series though, would be that seven foot uh, medium extra fast rod. Uh, again, that's, it's not the perfect rod for trolling a crankbait, but it's gonna work. Uh, it's not the perfect rod for necessarily casting super light jigs, but it's gonna work. Uh, it's not an incredible rod at bobber fishing, but it, it reaches enough of the points that it does all those things pretty well. You could drag a bottom bouncer behind it you could Lindy rig behind it, uh, $149, $150, somewhere in there. Nice cork handle. It's uh, a deep, uh, deep dark green. So it's got that very traditional, rich, uh, kind of earthy look to it that most walleye fishermen lean towards. Let's face it, uh, I'll throw myself in the bunch. Most walleye anglers aren't what you would call edgy, right? I don't see me getting to the lake on a surfboard or, a, or a, a skateboard, I'm sorry, or rollerblades. I'm going to be driving my uh, Dodge Ram pickup truck that's probably a couple years old, and we use live bait very often, so our fingers are dirty. So our equipment usually is much more conservative in the way it looks, and the Walleye series is that. It's got a full traditional cork handle, feels really well in your hand. And again, we can pair it up with a nice reel that's not going to break the bank, spool it up with that same line, somewhere in that 10 pound range, some kind of braided line, whatever your preference is. And you'll be able to go after walleye under any condition you can imagine. Okay, perfect. Okay, customer number three, I have a nice boat. I've invested a lot in the best electronics and I've been watching YouTube videos and I've been <laughs> seeing this rip jigging game, jigging wraps, okay. all that right. stuff. I want the perfect rod to use for rip jigging? My favorite rod for rip jigging right now is the Shields Guide Series 7 foot medium. Uh, it's labeled extra fast. It's not as fast as some extra fast rods. It leans a little towards fast, in the middle between fast and extra fast. It's not the most expensive rod that Shields sells by any means, but it is by far the perfect length and action for fishing your jigging wraps, ripping wraps, shiver minnows. Uh, I'll even throw big, heavy swim baits uh, up to three quarters of an ounce. Uh, snap jig with hair jigs with that rod. I spool it up with, uh, again, that same 10, maybe even up to 15 pound braid because you are ripping that bait pretty hard. So you need some line that's gonna absorb some shock. I have the Shields guide reel on there uh, size 2500 balances really, really well. The reel is made by Daiwa exclusively for shields. So it's on the LT frame. It's got an incredibly uh, mag sealed drag. So you don't get dirt and grime in your reel and screw up the drag. That combo has caught ugh, countless of fish for me, uh, not just on Devil's Lake, but traveling the country fishing with what we now call heavy metal, right? The, the blade baits, the jigging baits, all that stuff. Uh, the rod 
probably wasn't designed for that, but man, it, it meets all the criteria of being that great rip jig and rod. It's perfect. Very cool. Okay. Next customer. I, I've fished for a long time, been a walleye guy, a crappie guy, but I really want to get into the bass game. Tell me, I want to, I want to get two rods that will get through all the types of bass tactics to use. So if we're starting from scratch, we're going to assume that you own nothing already. So the first one I'm going to lead you to, and, and we're going to go straight to that Ibisu series. And I'm going to let the customer decide how much money they want to spend here, whether they want to start with the Ibisu Z or they want to go all the way up to the Ibisu Pro. Uh, I'll let the customer decide because I have confidence in all three of those rods. They're all going to perform very, very well. But it all depends what that customer wants to spend. The first rod we're going to grab is going to be a bait casting rod. It's going to be a seven foot. It's going to be medium, heavy, fast action. That rod will do just about everything a bass angler is going to want to do with a bait casting rod and reel. You can cast and retrieve swim jigs, uh, bladed jigs. You can throw spinner baits and crank baits with that. You could Texas rig worms or creature baits. You could flip and pitch. You could throw top waters with that if you wanted to. Again, is it going to be the perfect rod for all of those situations? No. If we were going to split it up into five or six rods, I would not have you buy four of the seven foot medium heavy fast bait casters. But if you're looking for one to get started, and Mike, I kind of put myself in that same spot as an angler. I love to chase bass, but I don't do it a lot. That's the first rod length and action I reach for because I can tie any lure in my tackle box on that rod and fish with it with confidence. The other rod I'm probably going to grab is going to be a spinning rod. And this is going to be for more of our finesse techniques. And I'm probably going to go with a six foot nine inch medium power, uh, extra fast rod. Uh, I like the six foot nine because I'm probably going to be using this for a little bit more finesse fishing. I'm going to be casting uh, lighter jigs, more like walleye tackle almost. So your Ned rigs, your shaky heads, maybe even putting a drop shot on that rod. Uh, and it's going to do it really, really well. Some guys might like to go to medium light, but if you're a new into bass fishing, you might want a little more backbone to set the hook on some of those techniques. But that six foot nine medium extra fast, incredible with the drop shot and incredible with a Ned rig. And I don't know, Mike, if you fished a Ned rig much or not in your life. Once you start, you might never throw anything else. Those things catch fish like it's just unbelievable. Uh, and, and again, it's going to be good with the shaky head too. So you've got your finesse rod and reel on the spinning side, and then you've got your go-to bait caster to throw everything else in the tackle box. Great insight. And yeah, I just got introduced to Ned rigs last year. Um, went, uh, went out to Mille Lacs, went fishing with a guide. We, 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 uh, we started out doing musky fishing, uh, didn't, didn't catch anything there. Didn't really have any falls. It wasn't the perfect time of year for it. Um, but then we went to, uh, smallmouth fishing. We were, we were tossing Ned rigs. We were doing sight fishing onto, onto smallmouth beds. Mm -hmm. And that is some of the most fun fishing that <laughs> I've, I've ever done. And so yeah, tell me why they eat that thing. It, it, looks like nothing right it's what is it two and a half inches long it doesn't really have a tail on it mm -hmm. but i ha i have yet to drag one in front of a fish and not have them eat it it's absolutely amazing how fish react to that presentation yeah i mean i would say in, in the situation that i was in it was more of kind of like an angry thing you know you're on my bed right. so <laughs> i'm gonna eat you but um yeah it's it, that ned rig is just a phenomenal bait and it it works it puts fish in the boat and it's and it's not just a bass lure either i mean i mean walleyes too it'll work for that oh as yeah well. sure does it sure does i've caught a lot of walleye on on the Ned rigs, but we don't want to give all my secrets away, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll save one or two for you. Oh, very cool. Okay. One last customer situation for you. Uh, gotcha. I do not own a boat. I am strictly, uh, a, most of the time fishing in rivers. I like to, I like the current. I like the dynamic with it, trying to figure out, figure out current breaks, things like that. What's the best rod for me in that situation? 
What what fish? I'm going to ask you a few qualifying questions here, if you don't mind, Mike. What fish are you targeting most often? Are you uh, are you a river fisherman that likes to chase those river monsters? Right, you're doing the catfish thing, the maybe some sturgeon if you're like on the rainy river or somewhere like that. Or are you a river angler that's trying to catch more game fish, panfish? What what kind of fish do you target when you're fishing in the river? Well. I like to do all three of them, so I'd like an example for all three. <laughs> well, you're probably not going to do all of it with one rod. That's for no, sure. no, 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 definitely. I'll I'll let you break right. this one down into yeah. three different. So, so we have an incredible we have an incredible line of catfish rods, which are perfect for river fishing. Uh, whether it's catfish or sturgeon or large drum or who knows what river you're fishing in, but. Uh, let's face it, there's a TV show called River Monsters for a reason, because there are a lot of monstrous fish that swim in uh, rivers all around the world. So our catfish line is is laid out to for different lengths and actions. A lot of that is uh, more personal preference than anything else. Uh, you're going to be bottom fishing when you're fishing for those fish. So they're, they're beefy, they're strong, uh, they're built to handle being thrown in and out of a pickup truck or the back of your car. Because let's face it, uh, most shore anglers, that's that's what we do. Uh, I still shore fish a fair amount myself. And I have a set of equipment that is definitely more durable than others. And that's what I travel with when I'm fishing from shore. So if you're looking for those bigger fish, I would definitely go take a look at the catfish series at Shields. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, the, the pro angler series is a good series. Uh, again, it's we talked about it a little bit earlier. It's not going to break the bank. Uh, if you're a shore fisherman that takes really good care of your stuff, though, fishing from the bank has absolutely nothing to do with the equipment you use. Uh, I think a lot of people think, oh, I don't need good equipment to fish from shore. Well, a bite is still a bite, whether you're fishing from the bank or in a boat. And if you want the sensitivity to feel the bite from shore, you still need that rod that has the sensitivity I think the reason people lean towards less expensive gear when they're shore fishing is, like I said, it gets abused more. Uh, it gets set on the bank. It might get sand in the reel. Uh, you know, it might get stepped on or tripped over. Uh, heaven forbid, you know, when you have a rod a little bit down the bank and you got to get there in a hurry, so bad things happen, right? You slip and fall. You tumble down the bank. I, I can tell lots of stories about the days that I uh, ended up muddy and wet shore fishing on the, on the Red River in Grand Forks, North Dakota for catfish. It happens. So uh, I think I would ask the angler, again, some qualifying questions about how well they take care of their equipment. Uh, exactly what are you going to fish for? And I would steer them towards the same rod that they would use in a boat unless they tell me I am not going to take care of this stuff, right? It's, it's going to be in the truck and every day after work, when I go by the bridge, I'm going to stop and make 10 casts and it's going to get rained on and my tools are going to get thrown on it and all that kind of thing. If that's the case, I'm not going to direct you to spend a lot of money. Uh, I'm going to get you good quality equipment, but it's not going to be the most expensive stuff on the shelf by any means. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how about, the, how about that lighter stuff like crappies, panfish, you know, whatever in the river? Yeah. Shields makes an incredible ultralight series. Uh, I think it's up to six or eight lengths and actions now. Uh, and there's a really, really good multi-piece uh, travel rod that we make also that I would direct folks to for putting behind the seat of your vehicle for fitting in the trunk of a car. Uh, but that ultralight series or our travel rod, uh, those would be the two that I would lean towards for a shore fisherman that's going to do some pan fishing. Uh, the travel rod is really nice, breaks down, like I said, four pieces, fits in a little case. Uh, you can carry it around, not have to worry about pieces getting stepped on and broken uh, and have a really, really good rod when you get to the shore to do your fishing. Very cool. So you touched a little bit on on reels that you were going to pair with pair with all these Shields Outfitters rods. Mm -hmm. Can you dive into a, a little bit about the Shields exclusive reels that we have? Yeah. So on the spinning reel side, uh, I believe we're up to four now. Uh, again, I lose track sometimes because I'm not in the stores on a daily basis, but I know the ones I've tested and I've tested four personally. Uh, they're all made by Daiwa. They're on the famous LT light and tough frame, which makes them absolutely incredible reels. They're all different price points. 
And uh, when we were developing these wheels with the help of Daiwa, I actually pulled a little fast one on a few of the guys in the team. And I picked all the reels up and turned the handles and played with them and flipped the bale a few times. This one feels good. This one feels good. This one feels good. And I jumbled them all up on the table and I had a few people pick them up with their eyes closed and try to guess which one cost how much. And I almost hate to say this, Mike, but most of us got it wrong, including myself. That says a lot to me. When you have reels sitting on a table that cost anywhere between 50 bucks and 100 bucks, three different levels, four different levels, and as an angler that fishes 100 and some days a year would pick them up and literally close my eyes and turn the handle and could not tell which one cost how much, that speaks volumes for how good these reels are from the bottom to the top of the line. Now, they all have different features, which is what makes them cost more because the first thought is, well, why would I ever buy the most expensive one if it feels the same as the least expensive one? Well, that's because the most expensive one has a different bail. It has a different drag. It has a, a, a magnetic sealed system to keep dirt and grime out of your reel. So the reel's going to last longer, right? So they all have different bullet point features. But the point of the story is every one of them is good. And I'll go a step further and say this in the podcast. As a tournament angler and a guide, I fish with all the different levels. I use different reels for different situations. And I am not the guy that just loads my boat up with the most expensive tackle. It doesn't always make sense to buy the most expensive stuff. I fish with a lot of fishing products that are in that mid-range and the Shields Outfitter mid-range spinning reels are money. They're bulletproof. They're awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's just, it's a great reason why to stop into your local Shields. You can, you can talk to an expert about your exact situation and they can help put you into the, into the perfect reel for your application. Oh, there's no doubt about it. You know, uh, one of the things Mike, that I don't think a lot of folks realize that Shields invest in is the training for the Shields associates. Uh, and this all ties in with the Shields Outfitter product because it's not just Johnny Candle and maybe Josh Douglas and Jason Mitchell, our other Shields fishing pros and the Shields fishing team. It's everybody that works in a fishing shop at Shields gets to offer input on product. These guys eat, sleep, and breathe fishing when they're not on that sales floor. Shields invests in training every year at a week-long fishing university that I've been a part of ever since the beginning of my uh, relationship with Shields. It's five days from 7 in the morning till 9 o'clock at night of learning about all these Shields fishing products, other people's fishing products, and where they fit in exactly what you did to me in this podcast is done to the Shields Associates for a week. Johnny, pretend you're this and a, a Shields Associate will try to help meet my fishing needs, right? Uh, and we role play like that all week long. We learn from industry reps. We learn from other people within the Shields organization. Uh, and that is a, a, an incredible asset for the consumer when they come into the store to be able to go to Fargo or Bismarck or Mankato or Colorado or Texas and, and ask, what do I need and why, do, why can you tell me? And the guy says, well, I just got done fishing at 11 o'clock before I came to work at noon today, right? That's, that's the kind of people that work in the Shields fishing shops. They're knowledgeable, they're passionate, and they can give you the right answers because they're trained on all the fishing equipment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it's one thing you don't see when you look at a at a real box or a price tag. It's just it's the pride that we have into it. You know, we're fishermen. We want to see everyone succeed out there. We, we want to put people in the best situation for for them to be successful. Exactly. And I think our stores do an incredible job. I've uh, there's only two stores in the whole chain that I have not visited yet. And every store that I have been into uh, everybody I meet is as big a fish head as I am. And that's, that's awesome, right? Uh, I've been to a lot of other tackle stores in my lifetime. Uh, sometimes I have to shop somewhere else because of where I'm at in the country and 
nothing more frustrating than asking a question or looking for a specific product and the person that's helping you may have never caught a fish in their life uh, and it happens. And at Shields, I don't see that happening. We don't allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're, you're not just buying merchandise from Shields, you're getting a lot of knowledge when you come to a Shields store as well. Very well said. So one thing we haven't touched on yet is uh, lures and baits, mm -hmm. and uh, Shields has an exclusive line of those as well. What are some of the, what are some of the lures and baits and plastics that uh, that you've been a part of in the research and development and testing? Pretty much all of the soft plastic baits, especially anything that's uh, more walleye targeted than anything else. Uh, my all-time favorite bait that Shields sells is the Pro Swimmer. Shields Pro Swimmer comes in several sizes, colors, started out as a bass bait and a couple of us got our hands on it and said, holy cow, does this catch walleyes too? Uh, very, very versatile. Uh, it's fun to work with, tweak, maybe change a color here or there, that kind of thing. Uh, I have not got into actually hand crafting a lure myself and say, hey, let's make these. Someday, I hope to do that. Uh, I do play around in my garage quite a bit, Mike, where you cut baits in half, especially plastic baits, because super glue will hold them together long enough to catch two or three fish. Or uh, you can heat them up with a, a lighter and stick them together and kind of weld the plastic together. I've made some pretty cool creations that uh, get laughed at when I show them to some other people. So I must not quite be the lure designer that I think I am. <laughs> but <laughs> who knows? One of these days, one of those things is going to take off and and it's going to make it into the Shields Outfitter lineup too. But you'll notice when you shop the, the Shields Outfitter line of, of mostly soft plastic baits and jig heads that they're tried and true, right? Uh, every company has a stick worm. Every company has a swim bait. Every company has a, a, a wacky style jig head and a, and a swim bait jig head. And we have ours as well. But it all goes back to making sure that it's the right components, it's the right hooks, uh, it's the right colors, it's the right value, and that the bait is going to react in a manner when it's fish to get fish to eat it. Uh, we don't have an overly extensive line of Shields Outfitter baits, but the ones we have are the ones you're going to want to have, right? When you're bass fishing, uh, again, those stick worms, right? The, for lack of another word, the Cinco's, uh, the Ned style baits, uh, the swim baits. When you're walleye fishing, same thing, the twister tails and the, and the paddle tail swim baits for walleyes. We've got a really, really good uh, swimming jig hook with the double barbs for the plastic keep so that tail stays on the head even longer, doesn't get chewed up as quick. And I can go on and on, even to terminal tackle, not just lures, but snaps and swivels and bottom bouncers and all that. Uh, I rely exclusively on the Shields Outfitter line of products. Uh, I've never had a, a snap or a swivel break. Uh, uh, the sinkers work just fine. The split shots crimp nice and easy. They stay on your line. Uh, I have no reason to stay away from that stuff. And again, I'm fishing for a living. If I lose a fish at the right tournament or the wrong tournament, however you want to look at it, there could be $100,000 swimming away. Uh, and if I rely on the Shields Outfitter brands of hooks and, and snaps and swivels, there's no reason everyone else couldn't rely on it too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you started there with the pro swimmers and, and I, I started working here at Shields about two years ago. And when I was, when I was fishing walleyes, it was mostly live bait stuff. And I finally moved to, uh, you know, trying artificial stuff, trying those pro swimmers. And I am, I'm a big fan. I've, I've converted now. You can, you can catch a lot of fish. It's so versatile, uh, <laughs> big fan, big fan of the white. So, oh, there's, that's, if I had to pick, oh, I, I, here I am giving all my secrets away, Mike. If you told me for the rest of your life, you could only fish with one thing in a fishing tournament, it would be the 3.8 inch white pro swimmer with a quarter ounce jig head on it. And I'm telling you right now, you'll catch bass, you'll catch walleyes, you'll catch northern pike. Uh, I've caught crappies on it, believe it or not. That's a really, really big bait for a crappie to eat, but I have caught crappies on that. Uh, I'm sure you could catch big trout in the Great Lakes. Uh, I don't know what doesn't eat a pro swimmer. It's absolutely incredible to see the fish that those 
lures put in the boat day after day after day. And uh, again, that white one, I, I think you're spot on. If you got to pick one color, that's the color that you're going to want to have is the white one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just an extremely versatile bait. And, you know, you set the hook, you just never know what's going <laughs> to what's going to come up on exactly. the other end. Exactly. And um, uh, I've used them for crappie too. What, uh, what I like to do with it is um, I like to take the, the smallest length one and then I'll, I'll cut a little bit off the front mm -hmm. and then I'll, right. I'll put it on something like a like a beetle spinner. And that oh, yeah. seems to have some really good action and, and do well right. for me. Right. And that leads us into the other things you can use that pro swimmer for, right? You said on a beetle spin, uh, a lot of times I'll do the same thing for walleye fishing, Mike. I'll take a bass spinner bait, take the rubber skirt off and put a pro swimmer on and throw it for walleyes. Uh, the bass guys use them as a trailer on their spinner bait. They leave the rubber skirt on and put the pro swimmer on. They use them on a chatter bait. Uh, I probably shouldn't say this again, but here you are. You must be like, Oprah. I just, you, you know, I to, just have a way of sneaking out the guts. secrets, <laughs> <laughs> but I've drop shotted with, again, that small size of pro swimmer that you talked about. I've put that on a drop shot hook and drug it around real slow, just inches above the bottom. And another phenomenal way to fish them for any species that swims is the new Tokyo rig. I don't know if you're real familiar with the Tokyo rig or I, not, Mike. I'm not but that's familiar the, with that. That's where you uh, you take your hook uh, and you put a split ring in the eye of the hook and then a short metal wire arm, slide your weight on the bottom and then bend the wire so the weight doesn't fall off. And VMC actually makes the rig already made so you don't have to make them yourself. Uh, but that way you can punch it through cover because you can Texas rig if you want to. You could leave your hook exposed and just drag it along the bottom or fish it like a drop shot rig where you just tight line it and keep it hopping. But I've had really, really good luck fishing the Tokyo rig with the pro swimmer on it as well. Mm, great information. Come here for uh, Shields exclusive products and get a bunch of <laughs> bunch of fishing tips. There we go. Hey, that's what we're here that's for, right. you know. That's all we're, right. We're here for advice. <laughs> exactly. Perfect. Um Another thing you've uh, you've done some videos for us on is the uh, exclusive line of, of flicker shads. Can you mm -hmm. uh, can you touch on those? Yeah, we have an incredible relationship with Berkeley. The folks there uh, have worked closely with Shields for years and years and years. And the last couple seasons now, well, it's probably been closer to seven or eight. They've given us the opportunity to come to them with colors that we may want to have exclusively in the Shields product line. Uh, color is so subjective instead of objective that it's it's really, really hard. Uh, they'll send emails around and guys will literally take magic markers and crayons and chalk or whatever we can find and we'll color outlines of flicker shads to come up with what we think is going to be the next great fish catching color. And quite honestly, Mike, every one of those could be a color, right? They're all good. Uh, and then we whittle it down to two or three or four every year. And those move into a Shields exclusive color for a couple seasons. Obviously, the ones that are better stick around longer. Sometimes you hit a home run. Uh, the ghost white flicker shad that has been Shields exclusive for I don't even know how long. Uh, been around since the very beginning. And that's that all white, back to the white again, uh, flicker shad. One year, one of the colors that made uh, the Shields exclusive list was called Pink Shine. It was a white bait with a pink back. That actually came out of my tackle box. I won the uh, World Walleye Championship in 2010 on that crankbait that I had custom painted by a friend of mine before the tournament because I knew we were gonna be dealing with very, very high muddy water and I wanted a very, very bright color. Uh, and that color stayed in the Shields lineup for a long time. Right now, I think, uh, I think we're on the Wonder Bread kick right now is our yeah, exclusive I, color. I just wanted to bring yeah. that up. There's it's been quite a, <laughs> quite a resurgence of, of Wonder Bread these days. Yeah, Wonder Bread. So uh, uh, we've got what, purple and blue and, and uh, pink. I think are the colors or chartreuse i'm sorry are the three colors of the heads and then they've got the speckled polka dots on a white bait uh very very walleye driven i'm not going to say that i haven't caught bass on those colors but 
those are definitely walleye driven colors. And uh, boy, if you chase walleyes with flicker shads, you're going to want to add a couple of those to your tackle box because they produce really well. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And, and why do you think that Wonder Bread style or color works so well? I think it's about the contrast, right? So you've got a darker color on the head, uh, something for the fish to focus on. We all know that game fish try to eat their prey head first, so they've got something to focus on there. They're a white base, and we talked earlier about why white is such a great color. Uh, I think it represents so many different species of, of prey, right? It looks like a shiner. It looks like a white bass. It looks like a shad. You can fish it in any body of water across the country, and there's something in that body of water that white is going to imitate it very well. And then you put it on a flicker shad, which has undeniably the best fish, catch fish catching action of any crankbait. Uh, you'll notice on my shirt, Mike, I don't have a Berkeley patch on there anywhere, right? But that flicker shad is something I reach for day after day after day because it just flat out catches fish. So you take a great color and put on a great crankbait and you can't lose. And it's really nice to have those exclusive colors uh, at Shields so we can offer them to our customers. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So there's there's a lot of differing opinions on this, but um, what what situations do you choose one color versus another? Like what's, what's your logic into choosing the color of bait depending on what situation you're fishing? So uh, I look at two things. I look at how much light is available for the day and the clarity of the water. So if I have a very, very low light situation, uh, but the water is crystal clear, uh, I can use those natural colors, right? When you have clean water, you don't need the big bright colors. And when you have uh, a low amount of light, uh, they're not gonna be blinded by the bait by any means. So that's when I use things that look like a perch or a shad. They have a rainbow trout, right? They have those natural colors imprinted on the side of the bait kind of like some of the new HD series you're seeing out there, right? High definition paint jobs. Mm -hmm. When I have a, a really bright day and clear water, I try to take advantage of the sunlight and I'll use more chrome colors, right? I'll use silvers, golds, things that reflect the light. You might as well take advantage of the light that's there and reflect it so the fish can see it from further away. When you have dirty water, and you don't have any light, right? Early morning, late in the evening, very, very cloudy day. That's when you need something that's gonna stand out, something that's gonna make a big silhouette. Dark colors, right? Your black, black and blue, if you're a bass fisherman, is a great dirty water color. Uh, you'll see walleye guys lean to those stupid bright colors that look like absolutely nothing, right? Looks like a piece of candy corn going through the water because it's bright orange and yellow and chartreuse, maybe bright pink but those neon type colors work really well in dirty water with less light. When I have dirty water and a lot of light, it seems like gold. Gold will outproduce silver in dirty water nine out of 10 days. I'm not sure why it is that gold reflects light just a little bit differently, but when I'm fishing off colored water, bass fishing with a spinner bait, right? I want gold blades on my spinner bait. When I'm walleye fishing in dirty water, I want a, a gold colored spinner or a, a metallic gold crankbait. Uh, just seems to work better. So those are kind of my rules of thumb. But uh, again, the two things you pay attention to is how clean is the water and how much light is available for the fish to see my offering. Okay, does, uh, does water temperature and time of year factor into your color choices? Well, you know, if you're playing the match the hatch game, Mike, then all of that stuff comes into play, right? There's certain times of year uh, where maybe a certain bait fish has just spawned and there's a lot of those fish available. So if, if the young of the year perch are now an inch and a half long, which happens in the north sometime end of July, early August, then there's an overabundance of perch in the system. Well, heck yeah, I'm going to use a lot of perch colored crankbaits at that time of year. Maybe early in the spring when the shiners are running and I know the fish I'm catching are keyed in on shiners, then yeah, I'm going to use those bright, shiny, silvery baits because I want to imitate a shiner. So you're absolutely right. You do have to pay attention to what those fish are eating because the easiest way to catch them is to give them what they want. They're, they're no different than you or I, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm in the mood to eat a steak, 
and you put a piece of chicken in front of me, there's a really good chance I'm going to walk away from it unless I'm really, really hungry, right? So you're going to have a better chance to catch me on a ribeye steak that day than you are a piece of chicken. So uh, you definitely want to put in front of those fish what they want to eat. The problem is, Mike, how do you know? right? There's so many different things for a fish to eat. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just pick your favorite lake and start rattling off the, all the different minnows, all the different crustaceans, the insects, the larva, the leeches and worms. I mean, there's so many things that they might be looking for. How do you pick the right color? And I think that's why you see so many colors on the shelf, right? Because at one time or another, they're all going to catch a fish and it's up to us to figure out when to put what color in the water. Yeah. Yeah. The color really comes into play when, you know, the, the fish are finicky, you know, like maybe they oh, yeah. want one thing, maybe they want another thing. So just, that was a ton of really, really great information. Um, the one thing I want to, I want to go back to is when you touched on using like Chrome baits during your high vis situations. So how do you, how do you fish that? Will you like, fish it higher in the water column then? Yeah, a lot of times that, that, that answer is it depends. Uh, most of the time, and again, I, I'm lumping all my fishing life into one little snapshot here. Most of the time when you're fishing bodies of water that are crystal clear, they're going to be pretty deep. They're going to be pretty rocky. And it seems like most of those bodies of water will have some kind of bait fish that suspends, right? Whether it's whitefish, tulabies, shiners, shad, something that lives up off the bottom. Great lakes come to mind when I'm thinking crystal clear water. And yes, we are going to be trolling up off the bottom. Uh, and the reason for the chrome is because it throws such a bright flash, Mike, that the fish can see that from a long distance in that really clear water. If you had a chrome bait and a painted bait side by side going through that crystal clear water, really, really bright sun, I think even you and I in scuba gear would say it's much easier to see the flash off that chrome bait than it is to see the flash off the painted bait. So fish it a little higher off the bottom, let the sun do its job, let that bait reflect that light and at least get that fish's attention, right? If, if they can't see it from a distance, then they're not going to get close enough to it to eat it in the first place. So you got to call those fish in a little ways. And that's where the chrome and the sun comes into play. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Well, there you have it. We've got our uh, exclusive rods, our exclusive reels. We've got our Shields Outfitters terminal tackle, plastics, basically, uh, basically everything you need to get yourself on the water and catch some fish. Yeah, I, uh, I sure hope to, to see a lot of folks this spring at the various Shield stores. We've got some great events coming up uh, just like every year. It's always fun getting out, shaking hands and answering questions. And I think we've all missed that for quite a while now. And it, it looks like uh, things are getting a little bit closer to normal. Knock on wood. Hopefully it keeps moving yeah, the right I'll direction. Too. But, <laughs> yeah, but I'm really excited, Mike, to get out there and get on the water. Again, new rods, new reels this year from Shields, some new plastics. Uh, and I can't wait not only to use them myself, but to share them with others so they can get it on all the fun fish catching activities as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Absolutely. Well, Johnny, thank you so much for all your, uh, all your expertise and, and for also helping us develop all these products that we can, that we can put on the shelves for customers and, and help everyone catch fish. Well, it's been a pleasure and I look forward to chatting again. All right. Thank you, sir. Have a good one. You just heard our conversation with Johnny Candle on our Shields exclusive line of Shields Outfitter products. Everything from rods to reels to plastics and terminal tackle, all designed through extensive years of research and development to help you be more successful on the water. If you have any questions on these products, feel free to stop by one of our local stores and ask an expert. They're here to help you with any questions you may have and recommendations to get you into the perfect gear based on your fishing situation. If you like what you heard today, please give us a follow on the listening platform you chose today. And don't forget to follow us on Shields Outdoors, Facebook, and Instagram. With that, we want to thank you for listening and see you next time.
Thank you for listening to the Shields Outdoors podcast. Stay tuned for future segments and visit our social media pages, Shields Outdoors on Facebook and Instagram for daily updates.